Hello, everyone. So uh, we are streaming live now. Good afternoon and uh, welcome back, everyone present here to our CESA YouTube channel. And on the behalf of Computer Engineering Student Association and in sponsorship with Coding Block, I'm pleased to welcome all of you today for this workshop on application of deep learning. Thank you, each and every one of you for being here attending this workshop today with us myself shraddha pujari general secretary of sesa and i have the privilege of begin uh, of your being your host for the day so uh, let's see uh, how many participants are present today Come on, guys, join fast. OK, so are you guys fascinated by how deep learning will power intelligent to process data and solve complex problems? If you are uh, excited and fascinated, please uh, type in yes in the comment. I would like to see uh, yes in the comment box. Please come on quick. I want to see how many people are excited about uh, today's workshop. Come on, quick. We have only few yeses. OK, yes, chalo fit. OK, so you are on a right track. We'll be taking today, uh, we'll be talking ab uh, today about one such application of deep learning, uh, that is handwritten digit classification on MNIST dataset using artificial neural network. We all know deep learning has gained popularity recently only because it has succeeded in solving a broad range of tasks that we are extremely uh, that were extremely difficult to achieve only a decade ago. This field of deep learning is highly dynamic because the libraries, the scientific papers, the training data set are more and also are most often available on open access platform. OK, so uh, I guess we have uh, some part, uh, something. OK, and uh, we have something for our participant today. So stay tuned till the end of the workshop. We have a small quiz coming for your way and uh, where you can win coupons from coding blocks. Are you guys excited for that? OK, so uh, I would like to kickstart today's event by welcoming our today's speaker for the day, Mr. Mohit Unyal, who is currently working as an instructor and a product manager at Coding Blocks. And he's also the mentor at TensorFlow. He has worked on various projects, such as text generation using Marco Chain and deep learning for musical generation and many more. So not only this, but uh, Sir has also bagged many prizes at uh, various coding competition. Uh, we are really glad that, uh, Sir, you could uh, set aside uh, some time from your busy schedule and uh, you're present here with us. Thank you so much, Sir, for gracing today's event. So it's quite uh, an exciting itinerary and we have ahead and I truly hope that this workshop is informative at the same time full of learning for all of you. By the end of this uh, workshop, uh, you will have a good understanding of what deep learning uh, and you will also learn how to build an application which you are going to study now of uh, deep learning. So stay tuned till the end of the workshop. We have a quiz coming also and uh, also you will win a coupon. So I guess uh, we have your Maharashtrian public also. So, uh, and today we know today is uh, Marathi day, right? So uh, I would like to speak a few words in Marathi. Uh, and if you have any, uh, okay. So first of all, Maja Sarva Marathi Bandhu Ani Bhagini Na Maharashtra Dinachi Hardik Shubheksha. And also uh, we all know uh, you might be having questions. So uh, Prashna. Uh, जर प्रश्न सुटना सर के असेल तर कालजी करना सर के काय अनि तो सुटत नसेल तर कालजी करुन काउ को ओके सो नाउ 
you may have questions right so you may type in in the chat box whatever question you have and at the at any time uh, during this workshop in the chat box you can uh, type your question we'll collect this and address them during the q and a session at the end of the workshop over to you sir thank you uh thank you very much shraddha and uh, all the team bhargav and all the team for inviting uh, to the session so uh, good afternoon everyone so uh, my name is mohit i'm instructor and uh, product engineer at coding blocks so the session will be on uh, deep learning right so we'll see the basics of deep learning first and then we'll move on to the application and also we'll be uh, writing code for creating a mini project kind of thing right that can actually detect uh, the numbers from the images for example if you write a number like 8 in an image uh, it can actually detect this thing right cool so uh, i think we can then directly start with the basics so uh, if i can share my screen just a second okay cool so i hope uh, the screen is visible so yes in that case let's let's start with uh, the deep learning right so basically if we talk about deep learning uh, it is uh, considered to be a subset of machine learning now those who know machine learning it would be easy for them to understand deep learning uh, but otherwise there's no issue we can directly jump to the deep learning as well right so we can take a crux or we can take an overview of deep learning so by the way machine learning uh, learns from the data for example if there is a machine there is a program there is a anything like it can be mobile it can be desktop it can be laptop it can be iot device uh, it can be arduino if any device that can improve from the experience or improve from the data that can uh, that can be treated as a machine learning right so machine is learning something from the data right but what is deep learning deep learning is also same as a machine learning only but the difference between machine learning and deep learning is deep learning is uh, you can you can treat deep learning as the study of the neural network so it is more about the neural network right now we'll understand what is neural network and uh, how this neural network came into the picture right so uh, deep learning was like recently from the last decade deep learning is really very very popular after maybe 2008 or 2010 right uh, so is is this mean that uh, before 2020 before 2010 or uh, in the last decades or last 3 4 decades deep learning wasn't there so this is not the case deep learning was there since 1960 right so deep learning was there since 1960s but it was not that popular right people were not uh, doing a lot of research in deep learning in that time so people started to do research maybe like more of the research after 2010 or 2008 we can say why deep learning is so powerful these days why not in 1960s why not in 1970 1980s deep learning was still there why people were not fascinated about uh, deep learning in that time so there are basically three reasons so there are three reasons why deep learning is more powerful today uh, rather than 1960s 1970s right or 90s so uh, the first one is called data if you talk about deep learning without data you cannot perform machine learning and not even deep learning so deep learning models are data hungry so they need a lot of data right huge something like 1 uh, gigabyte of images like 1 gb of image or maybe like 100 gb of images right so if you have these like uh, in data in a in a huge uh, if you have huge data like big data is that one term right if you have data then you can perform deep learning uh, deep learning models you can do deep learning applications right uh, the second one is called uh, computation complexity right or uh, you can say just computation power for example earlier my uh, earlier we used to have computers or laptop having maybe uh, 256 mb of ram or 512 mb of ram having 1 gb of ram was uh, very very rare right uh, maybe i am talking about 2010 around or some something like that right so but these days having rams like uh, 16 gb 32 gb is very very common right most some of you might have 32 gb or 16 gb ram in your laptop as well so this computation is again one of the important factor so in early 1960s 1970s we can think that uh, hardly there is some uh, ram or some hard disk right even we do not have uh, 100 gb of hard disk at that time right and the third important thing we need for deep learning is uh, called uh, your model or the algorithm 
so what people have done is they have created the algorithm in 1960 they were fine they were they have created the algorithm called ann right or the neural network but they do not had this data or the computation so they couldn't do anything right they were lack of the resources so they had to quit the deep learning the area right so but now up in i would say in early 200s 2000s right uh, 2010 2012 we are creating a lot of data for example facebook chat whatsapp chat right youtube videos uh, even the audio audios that that we send right so these are the data that can be used for creating a deep learning model right so we'll understand uh, why deep learning is important so as uh, as we have said that deep learning is just the study of neural network it this deep learning can be used for uh, any task for example if you have heard about self driven car right uber and tesla are creating self driven cars so this self driven car can also be created uh, in fact it is created using deep learning right uh, even there are other example like uh, you must have heard about this uh, smart speaker like uh, google home or alexa right so how these speakers can understand english for example if you uh, speak to your uh, mobile phone like uh, okay google wake me up in 1 hour it automatically go to the alarm clock and set an alarm for uh, the next 1 hour automatically right? you can understand the english language so these models or these examples are uh, basically they use deep learning right they use deep learning and uh, we'll will uh, understand one basic example but there are lot of other examples as well cool so let's talk about the neural network because neural network is the crux of deep learning so what is neural network if you if you just look at this term neural network neural network is uh, there are two terms right there are two terms neural and the network so so we'll first understand about this term called neuron because this is the crux or this is the core neural basically means neuron right you in your uh, biology class 9th uh, maybe class 9th or 10th maybe you have you must have heard about this neuron so neuron looks something like this if i if i try to draw a neuron i am not uh, perfect in drawing but uh, it looks something like this right and then these are your tails these are nucleus right so these are your uh, exons nucleus dendrites right these this this kind of a neuron uh, we have in our human brain right so what actually happens uh, we have human brains in a we have neurons in our human brains and these neurons actually helps to pass the electric signal for example if i touch a hot vessel the electric signal will pass from my hands to the brain and it actually tells the neuron the, the electric signal will be processed the information will be processed and the brain will output a signal that you need to pull your hand off immediately otherwise you will get hurt right so this is kind this is kind of information that we pass through our brain process and then gives the output now brain must have learned these things for example if someone is uh, let's suppose we take example of cricket right if uh, if someone is giving a fast ball you obviously know that you need to hit uh, maybe a millisecond before the ball is coming to you right so you create your reflexes you you make your reflexes very strong if someone is making uh, putting a uh, small or maybe uh, medium ball or maybe a spin ball you you have the idea how you want to play right because you have your reflexes very strong and how did you make your reflexes strong by training your brain the same way we train the deep learning model also so the whole idea of this uh, deep learning is to mimic the human brain it is to mimic human brain now mimicking means to copy something right obviously we cannot create human brain uh, artificially but what scientists wanted to do they wanted to see how a human brain actually learns and they wanted to replicate the same thing in the computer right they wanted to create something uh, so that we can have a artificial human brain in our computers because human brain is very intelligent thing right in the whole world so they wanted to create one intelligent uh, intelligent model or intelligent uh, function or intelligent program that can do a lot of things for example self driven car is an intelligent program that can take left turn right turn straight uh, stop in the red light uh, accelerator in the green light right and so on thing so this is called neuron in our human brain or human body right when this neuron is connected with another neuron and the other neuron will connect with the third neuron third neuron will connect to fourth neuron and so on they form something called a network and this will be known as neural network right so when one neuron will be connected with another neuron and most of the neuron right they are connected with billions of neurons or millions of billions of neurons right 
they forms neural network and uh, what neural network actually does neural network passes the energy or the pass information from one neuron to another neuron right this is known as neural network and the neural network that we have our human brain this is known as biological neural network so something known as bnn this is biological neural network so because this is uh, created by biology right we are not creating it the computer scientists wanted to replicate it they wanted to create something known as artificial neural network right because they obviously they cannot create a biological neural network so, so they what they wanted to do they wanted to create artificial neural network right so they created something like ann artificial neural network so that's how there is an algorithm in deep learning called ann and we'll be talking about this algorithm ann right cool so uh, i hope you got the idea why deep learning was there since 1960 and why it got it become very very popular these days uh, since last decade i would say and what is the need of actually uh, using the deep learning right now we understand this is a neuron this is a neuron in our human body but how does a uh, neuron look like in a computer how does a neuron look like a com in a computer right so let's understand that thing so uh, let's understand a computer neuron and if you have any doubt maybe you can just put uh, your message on the chat i'll be looking at the chat as well right so don't worry about it okay so uh, how does a computer neuron look like uh, just understand that everything in machine learning and uh, deep learning is mathematics right so mathematics is maths is very very important for machine learning and deep learning everything happens is mathematics right so we'll understand how maths actually create a neural network or a neuron so neuron will be uh, represented by a just a circle right let's take an example first right uh, okay okay so uh, so this neuron will have two part so this one is the first part this one is the second part let's take an example that you have to predict the house price you have to predict the house price so this is your task right this can be done this can be solved using the deep learning correct now you have this task of uh, house price given there are three features one is called there was this one feature called uh, the size of the house like in the square feet maybe second uh, second second feature maybe the number of bedrooms number of bedrooms and the third feature is the age how old your house is right or the property or the land how old right so what these are your inputs right these things are your input these are your input and they are sometimes known as like uh, always everyone remember that uh, input is termed as x we call it x right input we call it x right so this will be known as x1 because this is the first feature this will be x2 and this will be x3 now you just need to input these three numbers like x1 x2 and then x3 these three number will be input to the neuron right now what will do what they will do after getting uh, input to the neuron they will be multiplied with a weight so this is w1 w2 w3 in the initial time these weights are random take any random number and give it to this weight one something like 0.7 take any random number like minus 1.3 take any random number like uh, 2.1 take any random number these weights are randomly initialized you do not know what these weights are so in the first step of the neuron neuron what happens is you multiply a uh, number input with a weight so something like uh, this this formula actually happens so this is uh, i goes from 1 to n and w i x i so when i write w i x i what is uh, happening so when i write uh, w i x i uh, oh, this is just a second when i write w i x i and the summation i goes from 1 to n this means x1 or maybe w1 first so uh, this will be w1 x1 plus w2 x2 plus w3 x3 so this actually happens right this is wi xi wi xi matlab you need to multiply wi and xi w1 into x1 w2 into x2 w3 into x3 right you need to multiply so the neural net the first step 
of the neuron is uh, to do multiplication of the weights and so these are known as weights these are known as weights right these are known as weights so first thing is you need to multiply this thing and this will be known as z let's call it as z right i want to give a quantity let's call it as z right so let's call it as z okay so uh, after the first step there's a second step and in the second step what actually happens is you apply a linear non linear function right so in this second step you apply a non linear activation function non linear activation function this is very very important activation function right activation function what are the activation functions these functions actually activate or not activate something like uh, if the value is greater than 0 i will activate it i will say that yes you are true you can move forward if the value is less than 0 i will say that you will not move forward so this is kind of a activation function right now why do we use the non linear activation function so that our neural network can learn the non linear model our neural network can increase the non linearity because everyone know what is linear linear and non linear let's understand uh let's say that uh, there is this uh, crosses and there is this circle these are the circles these are the circles right if i create a boundary like this this can easily separate this linear boundary the linear line can easily separate crosses and uh, circles right but if i have data something like this let's say these are uh, crosses these are your crosses and these are your circles circles are outside right so they are kind of a uh, you you see so concentric circle they are creating concentric circles right so if you have a data something like this you cannot create a linear boundary you see there is no linear boundary that can separate there will be a non linear boundary definitely so non linear boundary will look something like this right so this can separate circle and the crosses so to uh, and a lot of time in deep learning or in the real world we have non linear data like images are highly non linear images are not linear data music or the voice or the speech is not a linear data it is a non linear data similarly videos are non linear data so if you have a non linear data you need this functionality you need this functionality of uh, creating a curve or creating a circle creating a sphere creating a ellipse you cannot be satisfied with just a line so what are this activation function they introduce a non linearity right they introduce non linearity now there are some functions that you can use functions like uh, one function is called relu very very popular function is called relu there is another function called sigmoid there is another function called softmax and uh, there is one more function called tanh and in fact you what you can do you can also use linear function you say that i am using a linear activation function we will understand why we use linear function and one when we use so this is linear this is linear function so these are few popular non linear activation function obviously linear is just a linear function this is not non linear right but most of times we use non linear functions so uh, most of times we use this relu relu is very very popular this is very popular right very popular so uh, let's apply a relu function so relu stand for rectified linear unit this is a function name how this function look like so the if i write a uh, relu of z this will be z if the z value oops if the z value if the z value is greater than 0 otherwise it will be 0 if the z value is less than 0 simple right this is very small function very very small but this is very very popular so this function will look something like this if i have the z value right the function will look something like this so before if the z value is 0 the value of uh, relu of z will also be zero but if it is uh, greater than zero then the value of it would be z this is how relu function look like correct so we apply this active non linear activation function and this will be your output so i can say that uh, maybe uh, i i'll, I'll uh, assume that g is the function name maybe g is like the relu and you will apply z you say you whatever value you get from the first part you apply non linear function into it just pass the z value into the relu function so relu ko i'll just define it uh, with z right and this is your prediction you will get the prediction 
right you'll get the prediction as simple as that right so this is how a neuron look like now let's talk about the neural network right this is one neuron this is just single neuron single neuron does two thing one is the multiply and input with the weights and add them together sum them together second part is add the non linear function or the activation function right so uh, this is it there are some functions like sigmoid we'll talk about sigmoid when we used sigmoid right and uh, most of times we use use relu now let's talk about the neural network uh, or you can also call it as a artificial neural network because the same thing right neural network or maybe you can call it as a artificial neural network uh, same thing now instead of instead of just one neuron what you do you add multiple neuron because each neuron will be connected to different neuron this is called neural network right so let's say that these are your input x1 x2 x3 where x1 is the uh, size of the house x2 is the bedroom number of bedroom in your uh, house and the third one is called the age of the house right so there is one neuron right this is one neuron the input will go here input will go here input will go here right it will have two parts it will have two parts right so uh, w1 will be multiplied with x1 w2 will be multiplied with x2 w3 will be multiplied with x3 right and the first part it will calculate the z and the second part it will calculate the a a is like uh, whenever i write a a means z of z activation function when you apply z into the activation function it will become a right cool cool so let's write this is just one neuron let's create one more neuron no let's create one more neuron and the same thing will happen x1 input will go uh, I'll, I'll maybe I, i'll put it with some different uh, color so this will go input to this neuron this will go input to this neuron this will go input to this neuron and similarly there will be different weights w1 w2 w3 and same thing will happen you will first calculate a then you will calculate z and let's say there is a different neuron as well there is one more neuron right input will go from here to here x1 to this neuron x2 to this neuron x3 to this neuron and same thing will happen there will be w1 there will be w2 there will be w3 how these w1 w2 w3 will be defined how do we define this w1 w2 w3 in the starting they will be randomly initialized like take any random number 0.1 0.7 minus 1.2 anything any random number right so what will happen now you have three numbers or three number right obviously you have three numbers so what will happen with these numbers or these output what you do let's create two more neurons something like this one and two right because eventually we need one output eventually we need a one output that is the price of the house that is price of the house but right now we are getting three output one from this one from this one from this so what we'll do we'll again take input from this and we'll put over here we'll take input from this we'll put over here we'll take input from this we'll put over here and again this will have two parts this will also have two parts something like this this also calculate z <clears throat> and a and this will be again w1 w2 w3 three so this w1 will be multiplied by a1 so this will be a1 this will be a2 this will be a3 w1 a1 w2 a2 w3 a3 and then sum them together right and uh, over here you will apply a non linear activation function and same thing will happen over here as well maybe uh, the same thing will happen over here as well right you take the input take the input take the input right so again w1 <clears throat> w2 w3 so you'll calculate z and a now again you have two numbers but for the house price prediction you just need one number you need one number only so let's take one neuron only and let's take input from this input from this and we, it will be multiplied by w1 w2 and again there are two parts first it will be uh, like a1 w1 plus a2 w2 so this will be z and for a now the important thing is you cannot use a uh, uh, here you have to use a linear function always i i always say that uh, in the second part you always use the non linear activation function right but i'm here i'm saying here you have you will have to use the linear activation function why because this is giving you the output and your output can be from minus infinity to plus infinity i'm assuming i'm assuming your house price can be minus infinity as well or minus 100 as well 
let's just say let's just take an example right this obviously this cannot happen this is not true but let's just take an example that your house can be or some other example where your example where your answer can be minus also something like minus 50 maybe if you are doing the uh, the climate or the weather or the temperature prediction your 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 uh, temperature can be minus 50 degree right or plus 50 degree as well so it can have minus infinity to plus infinity value and linear value linear activation function does not does not put any function it says that if your z is z i will give the i'll i'll give the z z is equal to z it does not apply any function linear is exactly the same right Linear is exactly the same function. We'll, uh, we'll also understand what are the different different more type of function and when we use this function. But always remember, okay, okay. So now let's 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 take the overview of what has happened over here. So this layer, this layer is called the input layer. Because this is giving you the input, right? X1, X2, X3. These are your three input, which is size of the house, bedroom, number of bedroom, and the age. These are known your hidden layers. These are known as your hidden layers. Correct. These are known as hidden layer, and this one is called your output layer. This is known as your output layer, right? So this is the terminology that we use in the neural network. So one is called hidden layer. Uh, one is called input layer that actually gives you the input, actual input. Second one is called the hidden layer, and the third one is called the output layer, right? If you have to predict just one number, you always have to use the output layer one neuron. So we will also understand how many neurons you have to use in each layer. For example, how do we understand that we have to use only three neurons? How do we have to understand that we have to use two neurons in this layer? Right? Cool. So, uh, okay. So let's, okay. So what this neuron is actually calculating, you uh, understand this thing. This is actually known as your feature. Each neuron, each neuron, these each circle, you see each circle, each circle is a neuron that calculate a different feature. For example, in the starting, we had three features, X1, X2, X3. Now what I'm doing is I'm combining these three features and I'm finding one feature. Maybe it could be uh, something like uh, the locality. It, this can be locality. You do not know what these features are, right? Generally humans does not, rem does not know what these features are. These features are actually computed automatically by the neural network. Maybe this can be the locality and uh, this can be, uh, you can say that uh, the the zip code or like the, how the area of the house is surrounding of the area, surrounding of the house, right? Something like that, right? So these features, these neurons actually represent some features. So they are, because they are combining multiple things, for example, size, bedroom, age, and they're combining multiple things, right? They are the combination of multiple things and thus they form a new feature, something a new, which we generally do not remember or we do not know, but they are, they are representing some features only, right? Similarly, these uh, neurons are also representing some features. These are also representing features, right? They are also representing features. So again, okay, and this one is representing the output because this is the final layer. This, I have said that this is the final layer. So this will represent the output only. But all these things are representing the features. All these circles or all these neurons are representing the features, right? Cool. So let's move forward. This is known as artificial neural network or uh, neural network, just called neural network. Now let's take one more example. You see, you have one x1, x2, x3, and then you take four new. Uh, this time you take four neurons. It's totally your choice how many neurons you want to take. Four neurons, then three neurons. Let's take three three neurons, right? Let's take three neurons. Let's again take three neurons and let's take just one neuron, right? This will be connected with this. This will be this connected with this connected with this connected with this connected with this connected. With this, connected with this. All these are connected with each other, right? All these are connected with each other. You see, all these are connected with each other. And basically what they are doing, they are passing the information or they're passing the signal from one neuron to another neuron or from one layer to another neuron, and this will be your prediction. The, when you have multiple layers, a lot of layers, what you have is called deep neural network, deep neural network, or sometimes known as DNN, DNN, right? Deep neural network. So sometimes you will uh, you will hear this term called artificial neural network or the deep neural network. They both are same, 
let's suppose that when this layer number of layers are be become 10 20 30 even there are some neural network that have 50 layers right you see so complex so what actually happens when you have just one layer you see this is also one layer this part is actually one layer neural network this is just one layer because there is single neuron if i talk about this this is three layer neural network because input is not counted input is not counted in the neural network layer so this is one two three three layer neural network right this was one layer neural network one layer because there is only one neuron and this is uh, this is i guess four near four layer neural network one two three four four layer neural network right so what actually happens when you increase the depth of a neural network you increase the complexity you make this neural network more complex if it was very very simple if it was just one neural neuron it is simple right it is simple it looks like a simple right it also computes the simple things but if you have three neural uh, three layers it is slightly more complicated if you have four layers it is even more complicated than the three layer if you have 50 layers it will be even more complicated or the more complex so when do we need to create more complex neural network and when do we want to uh, create a simple neural network we will understand it so whenever you have a data set or whenever your task whatever you want to do something like house price prediction it's simple it's comparatively simple right so maybe i can say uh, three or four layer would be sufficient for house price prediction but if i have to create a neural network that can that can uh, uh, that can run a car maybe self driven car you need to create a neural network of 200 length or 200 depth 200 layers right because self driven car example is not simple it's very complex example it's got very complex use case right so if you have a very complex use case you need to increase the complexity so that your neural network can learn even uh, even more complex thing even more complex uh, data even more complex functions right so depending on the use case, we choose the length or the number of layers of the neural network, right? So this is one use case. This is uh, one idea. How do we choose the number of layers depending on use case? How our example or what example we are performing, what application we are doing. So if we have a simple application, we'll use three or four layers. If you have deep or, uh, or big application, we'll use number of more number of layers. Cool. Uh, then let's move forward. Uh, and again, these neurons are actually features. Something like this, x1, x2, x3, what are they? They are features. They are number of size, size of the house, number of the bedroom, and the age of the house, right? Similarly, these uh, circles, they are also representing some features, but we do not know. Generally, we never know uh, because it is very, very difficult. But they are the combination of the input features. They are in combination of input features. For example, x1 into x2, x1 multiply x2, something like that. So if you take size into bedroom, the multiplication of this becomes the area of the house or uh, area and size look the same, right? Or uh, maybe we can take a different thing. Uh, there can be multiple features, input features like uh, garage room, uh, the number of garage, the cars that can this garage can uh, hold or num uh, the balcony area or uh, maybe other, other type of features can also be there in the house, right? But always remember these circles represent the features. Okay, so uh, what more we can do now? Cool. Always remember these hidden, these hidden layers. These are hidden layers, right? These hidden layers. This is output layer. This is input layer. Most of the time, I'm saying 99% of the time, in the hidden layer, we always use ReLU. So if you do not uh, remember that, uh, how should I? What should I do? What should I? Which function should I use? So if you uh, if you if you get confused that which function should I use, always use the ReLU function in the hidden layer, right? In each of these neurons, always use the ReLU. ReLU. Ninety nine percent of the times, or in fact ninety five, uh, I would say ninety five percent. Ninety five percent of the time we use ReLU. Five percent times there are some different things that we use, and uh, that will, you can only understand when you master this uh, deep learning algorithms. When you understand deep learning algorithms, then you will understand when we use 10H, when we use sigmoid. When we use uh, other neural, other other activation functions, right? But let's talk about the output layer, right? Let's talk about output layer. Okay, so output layer. So this thing called regression and classification. 
there are two things in machine learning and deep learning this is the example this is the concept this is not only for this is not only for uh, the deep learning but this is a general concept this is a general concept regression i'll, I'll first I take give you an example regression means when you predict continuous value when you predict continuous value right something like example when you predict house price okay uh, i think there's some issue oh, just a second example when you predict house price right so whenever you predict the house price it means you are doing the regression right so whenever you predict house price whenever the challenge is to predict house price it means you are doing regression house price uh, price of house whenever you predict the marks again marks can be continuous something like 75.5 or 89.25 right so again if you want to predict the marks it is regression uh, if you want to predict the temperature it is also regression because temperature can be uh, 41.5 degrees celsius something like that right or 36.8 degrees celsius i hope everyone understand what is continuous value or the real value right one more example the last example let's suppose you want to predict the price of stocks stock price that will also be regression right so i hope you got the idea what is re regression predicting the continuous value let's talk about the classification classification i'll first give the example and then i'll uh, summarize what is this all small definition let's say that you have to predict whether the person uh, will survive of covid or not survive or not from the covid like if that person uh, diagnosed as covid you have to predict whether the person will survive covid or not depending on some features depending on the report of the person depending on the health condition depending on the number of days the covid has been uh, detected right so depending on lot of criteria we have to predict whether the person will survive or not right let's take one more one more example uh depending on few criteria you have to predict whether a person will buy a credit card buy the credit card from maybe hdfc bank or not right you cannot say 9.5 yahan pe here here you cannot actually predict 9.5 41.5 uh, 3.8 you cannot predict the continuous value here what you have to predict is whether someone buy or not buy whether someone survive or not survive whether uh, someone uh, get diagnosed of cancer or not that cancer right whether someone uh, will pass the exam or will not pass the exam right so you see uh, what is the difference you are trying to do the classification classification means con categorizing into classes right or uh, ca categorizing into different different classes or different different categories right categorization or the cate converting into categories so if i say that there is a person one let's say there is uh, uh, this this one person p1 we have to tell whether this person will Uh, get passing marks will get pass or not in an exam now depending on the features but uh, how many how many hours he has studied how many assignments he have submitted how many bunk lectures he have done how attentive he was what is the uh, progressive rate or uh, how much is the efficiency of this person depending on these input we have to predict whether the person will pass an exam or not this is known as classification but this is only binary classification binary classification why it is binary classification because by means to by means to there are only two classes survive or not survive by credit card or not by credit card get pass or not pass right not pass so this is known as binary classification but there are other examples of classification called multi class classification called multi class classification so multi class classification what is multi class classification you have multiple classes uh, something like uh, if you take an example uh, let's say that i have given you an, an image right this image can be of four option i give you four option and this image can be one of these option something like a uh, cat it can be cat right cat it can be dog it can be uh, a horse or it can be a human but apart from these four classes there is no other chance that it can be a giraffe giraffe is not there right so there are four classes it means you have multi class classification it means 
you have multi class classification so whenever you have classes multiple classes it means multi class classification now sometimes you will also see that this is very very popular let's say that you are creating a self driven car this is a car yeah this is this is your car let's create a basic car this car is going this uh, this direction maybe uh, i'll just uh, how do we create a car this is the handle the wheels and so on right and so on so this is going to this direction right and on the top on the hood of the car there is a camera why there is a camera in the self driven car because it observes whatever is the happening it is the input device camera is the input device in self driven car right so what this car or this camera actually does it can take multiple decision for example whether you have to take the left turn or the right turn or you have to stop or you have to uh, press the brake basically or you have to press the accelerator right you see there can be different different classes so either left or right or stop or accelerator or different cases also right not just left right stop or accelerator there can be different cases so you see again self driven car also uses multi class classification correct self driven car uses multi class classification so there can be other real world examples also right so i hope you got the idea between class regression and classification now let's understand in the output layer in the output layer this is the output layer this is the output layer in the output layer if your task is regression if you have a regression if your task your prediction your your example is regression always use one neuron one neuron in the output layer one neuron in output layer i'm basically i'm talking about output layer only right output layer in the hidden layer you can you can create n number of neurons there is no there is no uh, restriction on creating number of neurons or maybe number of layers there is no restriction the only restriction is the output layer in the output layer if uh, you have one if you have a regression task you use one neuron and one neuron should have a activation function as linear so the activation function should be this should be linear right activation function should be linear if you have a regression task but if you have a classification task let's say that if you have a classification now classification classification can be of two type one is called binary one is called um, multi class so if you have a binary if you have a binary for example let uh, let's say that uh, sdfc bank uh, data science team or the deep learning team they want to predict whether uh, i will buy a credit card or not so that if i have a potential if i am a potential buyer if i have the potential to buy a credit card then their sales team will definitely call me maybe for next uh, one week or next one month right they'll continuously keep me keep calling me till i purchase or till i buy the credit card but i first they will predict that this has this person has a potential otherwise uh, let's suppose that there is a person whose salary is 2500 per month why that person will buy the credit card right so uh, binary classification yes or no something of that cat or dog only two classes cat or yeah, dog right no other classes binary classification if you have a binary classification you have to use one neuron in the output layer one neuron but the activation function it should be different the activation function should should be sigmoid we talk about we we just said about uh, this function that there is one function called sigmoid if you if you look at uh, this one uh you see sigmoid is there sigmoid so we have to use this function called sigmoid right we have to use this function called sigmoid if if we have classification task and if we have binary classification then we have to use this sigmoid what this sigmoid does it converts from minus infinity to uh, uh, take it it takes input from minus infinity to plus infinity it takes input from real number and converts between 0 to 1 so basically what it does is it takes input from minus infinity to infinity and converts between 0 to 1 number now if you have 0 to 1 let's suppose you enter any number and you get 0.7 right you get 0.7 so what will happen what this 0.7 is predicting this is predicting that you have class 1 because this is more close to 1 so it means you have class 1 class number 1 if your value comes out to be 0.2 it means this is more close to zero it means you have class zero 
So basically, you can put a threshold. If your value after converting the sigmoid, if you have greater than 0.5, it means the class one. If great, less than 0.5, it means class zero, right? This is for the binary classification. Let's understand about multi-class classification. Multi-class classification. For multi-class classification, we'll take an example that we are going to do in uh, the code as well. Uh, so let's say that you have an image. In this image, you, uh, it's written one. It's written one. Then you have another image. It's written seven, something like this. And another image, uh, it's written zero, zero, right? And this image is 28 cross 28 pixel, 28 cross 28 pixel, 28 cross 28 pixel. All the images 28 cross 28 pixels. What I can do is, uh, again, there can be numbers like 0, 1, 2, 3, till 9. So how many classes it will become? This become 10 classes. How many classes it become? 10 classes, right? So 10 classes. So I'll just simply write 10 classes. So 10 classes you have. So it means you have multi-class classification. Right. The task that we are going to do today is called multi-class classification, right? Because you have 10 classes, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Out of 0 to 9, your image can be anything. So the project or the mini project that we have is called image classification. Given any image, you have to classify that image. You have to classify that image, whether this whether this image is 1, whether this image is 0 or 7 or 2 or 3 or 5 or 4 and 6, whatever, right? So what we'll do is we'll take this input, we'll take the image, we'll convert or we'll flat this input image. So we'll what we'll do? Uh, so 28 into 28 is equal to 28 into 28 is equal to 784, right? 28 into 28 is equal to 784. So the first pixel value, so the first pixel value, we'll call it as X1. We'll call it as the first feature. The second feature, second pixel, we'll call it as X2 x2 the third feature we'll call it as x3 x3 right x2 this is x2 the fourth feature this feature we call it as x4 uh, and this will be 28th feature because there are 28 pixels or the width is 28 so this will be 28th 28th pixel right so i'll call it x28 x28 Right. Uh, so I'll just uh, write it clean. Right. So this will be known as X28. And then this will be X29. This will be next feature. This will be X29, X20, X30, X31, X32, and so on. So the last feature will become X784. So I'll do this. Conti I'll continue this. And uh, the last feature will be X784. So what I'm doing is I'm taking an image, I'm taking an image, maybe a one, two, three, four, any image, and I'm doing the flattening. This operation is called flattening of the images, right? So you are converting from 28 cross 28 into 784. This is a vector of 784 dimension now, and this will be your input image. So input image, the input image earlier, it was the 2D, but now you have converted or flattened it, right? So this is just one way uh, I will treat my input, right? Because it will be my it will be my features. This will be my features, right? So X one is one feature, X two is second feature, X three four feature, five feature. So there are total how many features? Seven eighty four features, and each feature is your pixel value. That's it. Each feature is your pixel value. Right, each feature will be your pixel value. Correct. So uh, now what will happen? Again, you add first first neuron, second neuron, third neuron, fourth neuron. Let's just say four neuron, right? Then three neurons, right? And uh, then maybe again three neurons. Now these are your hidden layers. These are your hidden layers. Hidden layer. In the final layer, in the final layer, what you have to do is you have to Put 10 neurons. You have to put a do Why 10 neurons? Because there are 10 classes. 
So always remember how many neurons you have to put. This is output layer. This is output layer. So always remember how many neurons you have to put if you have multi-class classification and they all will be connected. Something like this, 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 and then this, this, so on, right? They all will be connected. They all will be connected like this. They all will be connected, right? Something like this. So always remember. So uh, in in multi-class classification, in multi-class classification, you have to put n number of classes, n number of neurons. So what is n? Number total number of classes. If you have ten classes, how many neurons you will put? Ten neurons. If you have four classes, like cat, dog, horse, human, how many neurons you will put? You will put four neurons. Right. So out, always remember I, in the output layer, if you have multi-class classification, you will put that number of classes, the total number of classes. Right. Now, why you are putting that number of classes? Why you are putting ten neurons? Each neuron will be responsible for predicting. Each neuron will be responsible for predicting uh, the one class. For example, this neuron will say that uh, this will basically say that this is yes or no, whether this is this is image of one or no. This is image of one or no. So if you take the image of one, this neuron you will say yes, yes. This is image of one. This will say one, yes, yes. This image, this neuron is responsible for saying or telling whether the image is two or not, two or not. So it will say whether the image is two or not. So obviously two is not this. This is not two image. So it will say no, no. This image is not two, right? This image will be responsible for telling whether the image is three or not, so or and so on, right? And the last neuron will be responsible for telling uh, the image is zero or not, right? So the final output will look something like this. So if you give a image of six, if you give an image of six, your prediction will look something like this: zero, 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 one, zero, 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 zero. Uh, I think I have created uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I think I need to delete the last two zeros. I hope you got the idea why. Because all are zero except this one, and this is saying that the neuron six. This is saying the neuron six is one. All other are zero. So basically, this neuron is saying that yes, yes, six is there, and all are saying that zero 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 zero. Right? I hope you got the idea. So in the Multi-class classification. What you need to do? You need to put how many neurons? C number of neurons. And what is C? C is the total classes. C neurons. And the activation function that you will use, activation function that you will use is called the softmax. Is called softmax. So basically, these two th you need to remember. Sigmoid. When you have to use sigmoid. Sigmoid is when you have binary classification. Softmax. When you have to use the softmax. Softmax is used when you have multi-class classification. When you have multi-class classification, right? When you have C neurons in the output layer, because each neuron is responsible for predicting whether the image is this class one, class two, class three. This neuron will say that yes, this is class one or class zero. This will not tell anything about class two. This will not tell anything about class three. This will not tell anything about class eight, nine, zero, five, anything. This will only tell about the class three only, right? Correct. So uh, in that. Case. Let's move forward. Right. So let's move forward. Uh, I hope you got the idea about uh, how how regression and uh, how to do regression and classification. You you got small idea, right? How regression is done. How classification is done. Multi-class classification. Binary classification. Let's let's see how neural network learns. Just just five or ten more minutes uh, topic, and then we'll directly jump to the code, right? I know that you must be excited about uh, looking at the code, how this is happening, right? So we'll understand how neural network learn because if you understand the theory, uh, code is simple, right? I don't think that uh, code can be different in other languages. Code can be different. Uh, we are we will do the Python coding. If you do R coding, it's different. If you do Java coding, it's different. If you do C plus plus coding, it's different. But the concept always remains same. Concept will never be changed. You pick any language. This will be this. The whole concept will remain same. 
about the neural network about the deep learning the whole concept will remain same right so let's talk about a thing called uh, how neural network learn how neural network learn right so uh, by the way there is a thing called uh, uh, this thing called uh, forward propagation forward propagation forward propagate it means to take forward and there is a thing called backward propagation backward propagation right so we'll talk about these two terms forward propagation and the backward propagation right so let's take the same example uh, you have images of 1 2 3 4 uh, numbers you have to classify them from 0 to 10 class 0 to 9 classes so there are 10 classes so you have features like x1 x2 x3 till x784 why 784 because there was image of 28 cross 28 pixels right right there was a image of 28 cross 28 pixels and you have flattened this image you have flattened this image now you put first neurons you you put neurons right you you can put any number of neurons i'm not just uh, defining that you can put any number of neurons right so these are neurons always remember the final layer will so let these are hidden layers let's call them hidden layer and this is the final layer 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 i think i should have created this small neurons right this is your output layer this thing that this is your output layer so all these will be connected all these will be connected like this right all these will be connected uh, something like this right so all these are connected so this is output layer the final one is called output layer right this one is called uh, output layer i hope you got the idea so you always have the data right so you will have the data you will you will have the input image x you will have the input image what do you do you send the input image over here in the input layer this is your input layer input layer you will send the input layer right in you will send the image into input layer this input uh feature or the input data will pass the information to this neuron this neuron this neuron to the first neuron this will pass the information to the first neuron and how does it how it actually does it uh, do something like uh, the multiplication of the weights these are weights right these are weights 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 these are all all are weights these are randomly initialized weights right so the information will pass from first layer first layer to second layer from second layer to third layer third layer to fourth layer right so this no this is known and fourth layer to fifth layer this is known as forward propagation forward prop or you simply call it forward prop so what is forward prop when you take the input data or the input image and you pass the input image to the input layer input layer will pass the data to out, to the first layer second layer third layer fourth layer and to the output layer so this output layer will give you uh, so it will give you the one neuron will give that this image is one all other will give 0 0000 so maybe let's say that this give 0 0 0 this say 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 now it is the image of 0 1 2 3 right 0 1 2 3 now if this image if the original image if the image that you have provided in the input data if that image is also of 3 if the image is also 3 if the image is also 3 it means the feature the vector or the output vector that will be responsible for this will be 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 all zeros right so basically what you do is you calculate the loss now you calculate the loss so this is your prediction this is what your uh, neural network has predicted that this is this look like an image of 1 this look like an image of 1 but you say that actual one what is the actual one the actual is also 3 right the actual is also 3 so this will be 1 all will be 0 0 0 0 0 0 all zeros so you see actual is also one this is actual because we know this na this is three we know this we know this from uh, from the previous data from the data from the training data that we have right this is three we understand this right so we have said that the actual is three correct and what neural network is predicting neural network is also predicting three it means neural network is doing the good job so there is no loss so basically you need to compute the loss 
there is no loss there is no loss when you do not have when you have the same prediction as the actual one if you have the if you have correct prediction then there is no loss you are not making any mistake but let's say that neural network predicts neural network predicts that this is uh, this is a 6 this is a 6 now you will say that yes there is a loss now because the actual is actual is 1 uh oh, sorry actual is 3 this is 3 right actual is 3 but you are predicting 6 neural network is predicting 6 so there is a loss you are making making some mistake right so you are making some mistake the neural network is making some mistake so what it does is it calculate the loss it calculate the loss and then it do the back propagation this algorithm will be known as back propagation back prop or in short form we call it as a back prop right we call it as back prop or back propagation and uh, there is one algorithm in uh, machine learning that is used called gradient descent gradient descent and what it, it does actually while doing the back propagation it updates the weights it update the weights so it will update these weights all these weight like w1 w2 w3 w4 w5 w6 all these w's right it will update all these w's while doing the back propagation and then again it will send the image and now it will try to predict if it is again giving some mistake or the uh, correct or giving the incorrect prediction again we will calculate loss again you do the back propagation and while doing the back propagation you update the weight you update the weight in such a way that the neural network learn something so neural network improves neural network give less loss as compared to the previous time so if your neural network is giving less loss it means it is making less mistake every time you train make it makes less mistake every time you predict you make you you predict it will make less mistake the neural network will make less mistakes right so the whole goal is that your loss should be minimized it should give very very low very very less loss right so that should be the idea so uh, this way the neural network learns so you take the input image you flat flatten up it into 784 pixels they these pixels will be known as your input features these input features will go into the first layer and to second layer and the third layer and the fourth layer and then output if the actual image if the actual label this is actual level for example if the prediction and the actual level matches then there is no loss then there is no loss so there is no back propagation in that case there will be no loss there will be no back propagation so you don't need to update them because they are good they are giving good prediction so don't update weights don't wait update weights right but if there is a loss if there is a loss then ask these weights to get update using the algorithm called back propagation or the gradient descent they both are same back propagation and the gradient descent both are same so during back propagation gradient these weights are get these weights gets updated these weights get updated right so i think this is the whole idea uh, of uh, how a neural network actually learns right so uh, yeah this is it uh, this is it about uh, this is it about uh, a neural network right so i think we can we can do uh, the coding part now maybe if you have any doubt maybe you can just simply put uh, the messages right uh, you can simply put the chat i'll i'll take uh, I'll, i'll look into it right otherwise uh, we can move towards the coding part so what you need to do for the coding is you just need to search in the google chrome just search for google collab right what you need to search you need to search for google collab right just search for this thing click on the first link that you have right so google collab is a uh, is someone like google server and it will uh, we will will write the code and just click on this new notebook over here click on the new notebook let's click on new notebook so yes we have done so it will open a new in what is the common data structures we used in uh, deep learning so generally there are python inbuilt data structures called list tuples uh, dictionary so these are the very very common data structures if you if you talk about uh, trees we hardly use them if you talk about graph we generally don't not do not use them if you talk uh, talk about uh, maybe stack or queue sometime but linked lists uh, is still not used 
So Python inbuilt data structures are there that are uh, list, tuples, and uh, dictionary, or the hash map, we can say. Right. So yeah. So after coming to this interface, let's click on this connect button. Right. Let's click on this connect. Okay. Uh, done. So it says that is it is connecting. It will give you some resources. Like uh, it will give you a RAM. It will give you a virtual machine on the Google server. Since this is this whole platform is uh, from the Google, so it will give you some uh, space or virtual uh, machine, right? So uh, over here you can name your notebook something like A N N Workshop. Let's write A N N Workshop. Now there are a few libraries. Is it necessary that nonlinear activation function of the hidden and output library be same? No, no. Uh, obviously, there is no need to be uh, have the same uh, nonlinear activation function because if you remember the activation function we use in the hidden layer are always most of 99% time are ReLU, right? But the activation function we use in the output layer is softmax if it is multi-class classification. It is sigmoid if it is binary classification. It is linear if it is regression. It is linear, right? If you have a regression, so this is not to be. Uh, it's not necessary to be same, right? Okay. So now there are a lot of libraries that we will use. Uh, so we will use a library called Keras. Keras is one of the most famous library, or TensorFlow. TensorFlow is the most famous library, or Keras is the most famous library for creating neural networks, right? So we can do import Keras. Simple. And uh, from the runtime, if I can check the current runtime or the change runtime from none to GPU. So GPU, like they're more powerful than CPU. So you know the CPU, central processing unit, this thing called GPU as well, graphic processing unit. So those who play games, they know about the graphic cards. What if you do not use any activation function in neural network? If you do not use any activation function in neural network, there will be no use of deep learning. The whole deep learning idea is very, very powerful because of the neural, uh, because of the activation function. What activation function actually does? They increase the non-linearity. If you do not have the non-linearity in deep learning or the models, they will not be able to capture the non-linear relationship that you have in the data set. For example, images are highly non-linear. Images are not linear. Images are considered to be non-linear data. Or uh, similarly, speech, voice, they are considered to be non-linear data, right? Or uh, video or the text data. Even the text data is also non-linear data. All these data are non-linear. There are hardly, there are hardly few data that are linear data. And for linear data, we can simply use machine learning. But for non-linear data, we have to use the deep learning part, right? So we can write import Keras. And to execute it, we can click over this button. I say we can click over this button, right? This will be executed or otherwise what you can do shift enter. Just do shift enter, right? I'm putting a comment shift plus enter. Most of the times I use this thing shift enter. So just use shift enter. It will be executed. So let's also take the data set. So I, what I'll write from Keras dot data sets, I'll import MNIST. So you remember MNIST was one type of data set that can be used for the handwritten digit. 110 digit, everyone remember? So that is known as MNIST. MNIST, right? 110 digit is known as MNIST data. So I'm saying then from keras.datasets, import this MNIST, right? So I will write MNIST dot, and there will be a lot of functions that will be available. So one function is called load data. So I'll call this load data, right? So load data will give you 60,000 images, 28 cross 28 grayscale images of 10 digits, right? So it will give you 60,000 images and each image is 28 cross 28 image. And it returns four things. It returns four things. It will return four things. X train, X underscore train, Y train. I'm keeping a variable. And X test and the Y test. Right. So training data, this X test and X train and Y train, this is used for the training of neural network. This X test and Y test will be used for the evaluation or for the prediction. If you want to predict on the new data, you will use this X test and Y test. 
if you want to train a neural network you will use this x train and y train and for the prediction or the evaluation you will use x train and y train so we have evaluated we have found right now if you look at this x train dot shape x train dot shape shape basically means how many images are there so it tells there are 60000 images and each image is 28 cross 28 image e one image is called 28 cross 28 and there are total of 60000 images how to switch to gpu so uh, you can click on this run time on the top there is a run time and you can click on this change run time change run time and from here it was earlier none and then you can use to gpu so you just need to go to the run time right run time you need to change to gpu so this is run time right so if i pick one image if i pick the first image so first image you can pick something like train x train of 0 so this will pick first image and now this look like numbers this is not this is not looking like image right can we see any image in this no right we cannot see any image so what are they they are the pixels they are the pixels of any number or any image now what if i want to represent this image yes we can do this so for this what we will do we will uh, we will use a library called matplotlib right so let's come down or maybe we can delete this i don't want to see these lot of numbers i can delete this and execute one more time or maybe you can simply if you want to delete a cell you can simply hover over this and uh, there is a button over here delete you can also delete it from here so i don't want to see these lot of numbers because they do not make sense to me right so what i'll do is i'll uh, i'll import a library so i'll import matplotlib so this library is used for plotting something or plotting any image right so i'll use matplotlib.pyplotspt i'll use this let's import i will import this so i'll create a function so in python we create function right def def stand for define define a function or definition so the function name is uh, show or maybe uh, display display and it will take an image or basically the take the data or uh, take the data and what it will do it will do uh, plt dot i am show data dot reshape into 28 and 28 and that's it so what it does uh, there is a function called display that takes the data and data you need to display this you need to display this image so to display any image you use plt what is plt plt is matplotlib because matplotlib is a library you are importing and this library is used to help it is used to display images i'm right plt dot i am show i am show means show the image show the image right and i want to display the data image data right whatever the data you will give me i want to display that first i will reshape into 28 comma 28 that's it right display it in the image now if you execute it and if you call display and you pass x train of first x train of 0 basically so it will pick the first image and it will display it you see so the first image i think this is a 5 but i said that they are colored they are they, they are uh, gray scale why they seems to be colored because it automatically gives the color so basically if you want to put a, a black and white you can write c map is equal to gray you can write c map is equal to gray right now if you execute it one more time shift enter to execute you see this time you are getting black and white image right and the image is 28 cross 28 pixels if you take one more image maybe the next image like one so this will be zero if you take maybe any image random any image 6 8 9 8 it will be one more Im any image three this look like a three this is hand written right this is a hand written number so what we have to do is given any image we have to predict its number and by the way they also have their labels like if i do print y train of y train of 6 8 9 8 so this will give me 3 this will give me 3 you see over here 3 you see it has given me 3 if i change this number to maybe 12 it will give me any other image and it will also give the label so label is again oh it again got 3 but let's try with 13 now 
So this time six, you see the image is six, image is six, and also the label is six. So it means that I have the actual label also. So you remember because fi for finding the loss, how do you find loss? Because you have the actual label, actual label. That's how you can only find the loss. If you do not have actual label, how would you be able to find the loss, right? You cannot do. So that's why this 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 actual label it's also important actual label is also important right that's why we have used this uh, y y train we've used this y train because it has the actual label right cool. uh one thing is what we need to do we need to flat all the images if you remember from 28 cross 28 we need to flat it into 784 dimension so how do we flat there is a function called uh, if i write x train I can reshape it. X train is equal to X train dot reshape uh, 60,000 60, into 784. Into 784. Because earlier it was earlier it was 60,000, comma 28, comma 28. So each image was there are 60,000 images. Each image was 28 cross 28. What I want to say is keep 60,000 images as it is, 60,000 images as it is. But this 28 cross 28 will become 784. Basically, the, the image lo was looking like this. But what I'm saying is, I need to flat it. I want to flat. Uh, earlier, it was it was looking like this. I want to flat it. Flat it. I want to flat all the pixel into 784 dimension vector. Because this is something like this will be x1, x2, x3, and the last one would be x784, right? Because you need to give the input into this format, into one dimension, right? So I have reshaped. If you check now, x train dot shape now, you, you will see 60,000 comma 784 now. What was what it was earlier? Earlier it was, you see, earlier it was 60,000 comma 28 comma 28. Right? Earlier it was 28 comma 28. Similarly, let's also check for x test. So the right now x test shape is uh, x test shape, shape is uh, 10,000 comma 28 comma 28. So there are 10,000 images. I want to change it. I want to change it. How do we change? X test is equal to X test dot uh, reshape 10,000 comma 784. Now, if you check X test dot shape, this will become 10,000 comma 784. Correct? 10,000 comma 784. Now, if you check Y train, if you check Y train, Y train dot shape. Let's check white dot shape also, right? So white train dot shape says that this is 60,000 only. So it means there are 60,000 numbers. What are these numbers? Let's try to print them. What are these numbers? Let's print white train. Or you can write print of white train. Print white train. Print white train. Something like this. Uh, okay. So by the way, the, is it showing three numbers and then dot 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 and the last three numbers? First three number dot 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 last three numbers. If you want to display first 50 number, you can write from 0 to 50. From 0 to 50, display me 50 numbers. So these are the 50 numbers. So if you ask the first image, first image is 5. Image 5, something like this. If you ask second image, second image is 0. Right? As something like this. The third image is, is, a, is, a, is an image of 4. Something like this. The next image is image of 1. But this is not how we want label. This is not how we want label. What we want label as one hot encoded. This is known as one. This is known as one hot encoding. So what is one hot encoding? If you have image, one image, others will be zero. Only that number will be one. Something like this. If you have a, if you have an, Im just a second. If you have an image of five, what should be zero? 0, 0, 0, uh, it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, then there should be 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. If your image is 5, your output should look like this. Not just 5. Not just, just 5. This should not be there. I know that this is correct. This is correct. But we have to convert into this format. Why? Because how, otherwise, how would our neural network be able to find the loss? Because neural network gives 10 numbers as output. Like 10 numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 1. It gives 10 numbers as output. And if you just say that, 
compare the loss with five it will not be able to do you have to tell that my output was also 0000 and then 100000 now compute the loss so it can compare this is zero this is also zero fine 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 right so we need to convert this 5 to 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. if your image is zero or maybe if your image is one if your image is one then 0 1 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 all zeros something like this I hope you got the idea and this is known as one hot encoding one hot encoding right you need to do one hot encoding to do one hot encoding there is a small very basic very basic function so you can write from keras dot preprocessing uh, or from keras dot utils import to categorical to underscore categorical this function is there that can perform the one hot encoding by the way we can do all of these things on our own without using any library without using any function right so what it does it uh, converts into the one hot encoding on the binary class matrix the same thing right so if you give something like 0 1 2 3 it will convert something like this so this is 0 this okay uh, i guess that was representing 0 so yeah so if you look, look at the first row if you look at the first row if you look at this row this row is representing 0 because 1 is at the first position this is representing 1 because 1 is at the 1 location this is representing 2 this is representing 3 right because you have given the data as 0 1 2 3 right so this is one hot encoding so how to do one hot encoding you will write two categorical and you will train you will give y train and uh, output will also be y train output will also be y train now if you look at the shape of y train y train dot shape earlier it was 60000 comma now it is 60000 comma 10 and if you look at the first value if you look at the first value of y train the first value first row it's you can easily see this is 0, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it means 1, 1 is there for the 5 image, for the image of 5. And all others are 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So it, wherever you see 1, it means that will be the image. That will be the image. Now it is easy to compute the loss. So if your neural network is predicting this and your output is also in this format, the loss can easily be computed. right? And that loss is known as categorical cross entropy categorical cross entropy again there is a formula for this uh, loss function but we don't want to go into that uh, mathematical detail what is the function right or the formula so once we have done this it's it's totally fine we can also convert the y test so y test will be y test dot uh, reshape and uh, oh no no not not reshape we need to convert it to one hot vector so two categorical and pass the y test and again, you look at the y test dot shape. Earlier it was 10,000 to comma. Now it is 10,000 comma 10. Right? Uh, any doubt so far? If you have any doubt, just let me know. Uh, now we are going to build our neural network. So this was the data pre-processing. This thing is actually known as data pre-processing because we had the data. Right? We had the data. We had the x train. We had the y train. We had the x test. We had the y test. But we need to, to convert it into a correct format into a standard format that a neural network can accept, right? So this was the format that we need to reshape x into 60,000 into 784, the x string, and x stress as 10,000, comma 784. And we need to reshape the y, 60,000, comma 10, and y test as 10,000, comma 10. Right? So I hope you got uh, this basic idea. Okay, uh, so maybe I can create a model now. So for creating a model, we will use the Keras, right? So few things I can import. So I can import from Keras, do, uh, from Keras dot models. I can import a model called sequential. And uh, so we'll see what is sequential model. From Keras dot layers, I can import. I can import. Uh, I can import uh, a dense, right? I can import dense. So what is the sequential? What is the sequential model? So sequential model means uh, when you get input, 
the first thing that you will output is the first layer, then the second layer, then the third layer, the fourth layer, and the final layer, and the output, so on thing, right? So everything will go sequentially, right? From first to second, data will pass from input to first, first to second, second to third, third to fourth, and, and to the last two output. There's something known as a non-sequential as well, but obviously that we do not want to do right now, right? And uh, what is this dense layer? What is this layer called dense? I'm importing a layer called dense. This dense layer is called, uh, you see, what is this this layer, the, the whole layer? This is called hidden layer one, hidden layer two, hidden layer three, output layer one, input layer. So these layers are called the dense layer. They are called dense layer. So dense layer also called it fully connected because they all are connected with each other. They all are connected with each other. You see, they all are connected with each other. They are, that's why they are known as fully connected or dense layer, right? So we have imported these two things. Now let's create a model. So I'll write a model and this will be an object of sequential, right? Now let's add first layer, first hidden layer. I will write model.add. I want to add the first hidden layer, this one. I want to add first hidden layer. So which type of layer I want to add? I want to add dense layer, right? Dense layer. And it says how many units you want. How many number of neurons? Like over here, you can see there's one neuron, two neuron, three neuron, four neuron, right? How many neurons do you want? So I'll say neurons or the units will be, uh, maybe I can give uh, 512. Let's write 512 units. And the second parameter is called the activation. Second parameter is called the activation. What is the activation function you want to use? So the, the activation function in the hidden layer, always remember, it's called ReLU. So in the strings, you will write ReLU, right? And since this is the first layer, it should understand that how many input will come, right? Since this is the first layer, how it will understand that how many neurons or how many input will come. So how many this neuron has to understand that how many input are coming to this neuron. So for this, what we have to do is we have to say, Input, uh, input, input shape is equal to 784 comma. Because one example is 28 comma 28, right? One image, one image is 28 comma 28, 28 comma 28. But we have reshaped this. We have reshaped this into 784. So this will become, the input will become 784, right? Input will become 784 now input will become 784. So this 784 dimension will go to here. And similarly, 784 dimension will go to here, second neuron. 784 dimension will go to the third neuron and so on, right? So I need to I need to say input shape is equal to 784. This is for the first layer. Let's add one more layer. Model.add the same layer, dense layer, right? Let's add dense layer. How many units you want? Units will be, let's write 256. Right? What is the activation function you want to use? I want to use the ReLU activation function because this is a hidden layer. This is a hidden layer. Now in this, you don't want to give the shape. There is no need to give shape. Why? Because the second layer, from the second layer, it understands the output of the first layer. The, oops. the output of the first layer will be the input for the second layer. The output of the first layer will be the input for the first layer, input for the second layer. So obviously it understands that the out, what is the output of second, first layer? It under the, the neural network automatically understand and it will automatically take this as an input. But always remember you need to provide the input shape in the first in, in the first neural network, first, first layer. Since this is the first layer, you need to provide the input because first layer does not have the previous information that how many input will come. But the second layer, second layer has the information. Right? This has the information that the total number of input will be from the first layer. So that's it. So that's why you don't want to add this input shape. Let's add one more layer. Same thing. Let's copy this. Let's paste this. And this time, let's put 128. And let's add one more time. Let's write uh, 64. And now I want to write the final layer. So always remember, the final layer, how many neurons should be there in the final layer? Can anyone tell in the final layer of the neural network, if I'm doing the image class classification or multi-class classification with 10 classes, how many 
input new how many neurons should be there in the final layer so i'm adding the dense layer and the total number of units units you should tell you will tell me the total number of unit how many units or how many neurons should i put in the final layer and also and also what should be the activation function if it is multi class classification and it is the final layer always remember this is the final layer this is the final layer right so how many units and what is the activation function so uh, any any guess any okay uh, someone said 10 okay cool because there are 10 classes so obviously i need to put 10 and the activation function and the activation function should be the softmax right okay so uh, at the end we can do model dot summary at the last we can do model dot summary just to check how our model look like so this is a uh, this was a second yeah this is how our model look like so the first layer is called dense layer having 512 neuron then the second layer is dense layer having 256 neurons and the third layer is uh, again dense layer having 128 neurons 64 and then 10 right so uh, these are this is your summary and now your model has been done your you have created a model so this is how you can create a neural network right the one more thing the very basic one more thing is you need to compile this model compilation is important compiling model compile the model while compiling the model what you tell is so model dot compile what you tell is the optimizer you say the optimizer and it will be uh, this thing called adam so optimizer is like you remember what is the back propagation the back propagation in this back propagation there is a algorithm called gradient descent gradient descent does all these algorithms now you do not want to implement the gradient descent we do not implement right because it is uh, difficult to do so what we say we write gradient descent over here and adam is the variation of gradient descent so we say using the gradient descent algorithm or the adam algorithm we want to optimize this the whole neural network we want to optimize we want to we want the weights to get optimized right so adam or the gradient descent they both are the same thing right the second thing is you write loss so what is the loss right you remember it compute the loss so what is the loss the loss is uh, over here i must have written this thing as well categorical cross entropy right the loss is categorical cross entropy so you write something like this categorical underscore cross entropy right and the last parameter is called matrix so what is the matrix that you want to observe i want to observe the accuracy I want to observe the accuracy because for me accuracy is the most important. What is accuracy? Accuracy means if you give hundred images, and out of hundred images, you, the model can predict eighty images as correct. Eighty images are correct. Twenty images are wrong. It means the accuracy is eighty divided by hundred. So it means zero point eight or the eighty percent, right? So I want to measure the accuracy. That's why matrix matrix is basically uh, what measure you want to take or what. measure you want uh, what thing or what parameter you want to measure right so let's let's do shift enter to execute right and then let's write model dot fit now train your model train your model train your model this is your <clears throat> this is your model training so for training we use this function called fit <clears throat> right we use this model function called fit the first parameter is called the first parameter is called x you need to provide the input data so i'll call x as x underscore train and you need to provide the y y is equal to y underscore train then uh, everything is fine just one more uh, thing called epochs so epochs i want to put as 10 now what are epochs epochs are how many times the model will look at the same data so 10 means if you have 60000 images if you have 60000 images let's say if you have 60000 images okay if you have 60000 images in the first epoch first epoch model will look at all the 60000 examples all the 60000 images model will learn from 60000 images in the second epoch epoch is basically the iteration 
model will again learn from the all 60000 examples in the third epoch model will again learn from the 60000 example why model is learning again and again from the 60000 examples because if you remember a human a very small kid cannot learn if you teach him that this is how a look like that small 2 month old or a 3 month or one maybe one year old kid cannot understand how a look like right we need to teach him a lot of time maybe 100 times right he always practice a a a he always write in his, in his notebook a a look like this a look like this so the same way neural network learns from the human brain it has a neural network has the same perspective like a human brain learn so neural network has to learn lot of time from the same images so if you just train for one epoch the neural network will not be able to learn uh, perfectly if you train second time maybe a, a better one third time even better if you train for 10 epochs or 10 times or 10 iteration on the same data 60000 examples it will learn even better right so that's why we are writing epochs as 10 right and uh, then there is a one uh, there is this one uh, parameter called uh, validation split so this parameter called validation split i will use this validation split and i'll say that this is uh, maybe 0.1 or like 0.2 so if you have 60000 examples it will take uh, it will take uh, 48000 example to train the images or uh, to train the model and it will take 12000 example to evaluate or the validate basically it will check so for example that you have uh, you have trained uh, kids that uh, 1 plus 2 is equal to 3 and 3 plus 4 3 plus 2 is equal to 5 you have you have told them or you have you have taught them how to solve questions of the addition then you give a new questions right you give new question to test whether the students are able to capture or to to understand or not similarly what we are doing is we are training on 48000 images so this is your training like when you teach or uh, in your classes or like when when you uh, study in your uh, college you are getting trained and then you have marks and then you have exams exams are basically the validation if you are able to understand the concept or not the same thing we will do we will train our model on 48000 images and we will test or validate on 12000 examples right so let's write this thing and let's execute now so now we have executed okay uh, i guess there is some issue uh, uh, it should be why it should be why uh, over here it should be why is equal to y train y is equal to y train right now let's execute you see the first epoch is there and uh, the first epoch is training so it says that the training accuracy is 80% the validation accuracy is 92% now that in the second epoch training accuracy is 93% validation accuracy is 95 in the third epoch 95% is the training accuracy 95% is the validation accuracy then 96% 96% 97% uh, somewhere 96% then 97 96 so you see your accuracy is improving over here you get 98% and 97% right so you get somewhere around 97% accuracy in the validation set right so if i ask model dot evaluate on the training data on the training data how much accuracy do you get on the training data how much accuracy do you get so it will tell it will tell uh, just a second it will tell 98% just ignore this part you don't need to understand this what is written 98% is the training accuracy it means out of 100 image it is able to find 98% correct 98 image is correct it is able to predict 98 image is correct right let's also test for the new data that is not uh, used which is the test data x test and the y test let's understand this okay so 96.99% on the new data on a new data you can ignore this part on a new data on new images like if you give 100 new images the probability is 97% times it will give the correct answer that this is image 1 this is image 2 this is image 0 5 6 8 whatever the images you have it will give the correct answer right 97% times it's the case right so this is how we can evaluate 
Now let's take any random image from our X test. You remember what was X test? This was X test. The whole data, right? Let's take any random image. I'm putting uh, 999. This is my random image. You see, Rand any random image. This is your random image, right? I want to predict. First, let's visualize this image. How does the image look like? How does this image look like? So how do we display? I have created a function called display. So I'll write display and I will pass X test of 999. Now this will uh, show an image. Okay, so this image look like nine. Fine. This was the origin. But let's see what your neural network predicts. Right? Let's see what your neural network predicts. So what I say is model dot predict classes model dot predict classes and then predict for x test of nine nine nine. Uh, okay, so there's an error. There's a small error. There's a small error, and it also gives uh, it also it also gives the uh, idea what is the error. So input zero error sequential is incompatible with the layer expected access minus one to have the 784 dimension. Okay, so what we can do? We can just uh, reshape it into one comma 784. That's it. And now let's see if it can predict or not. So it is predicting. It is predicting nine. You see, it is predicting nine. If you take the zeroth element, it is predicting nine. It is predicting nine, right? So here you can write your prediction, a prediction, and you can print your prediction. Print, print your prediction. P R E D prediction, right? So the prediction is nine, correct? And the image was also nine. This was a new image. That it can predict nine. Let's also test one more image, maybe uh, 154 or 143. So this image is uh, one. Let's also let's predict what uh, your model actually says about this image. The model says that this image is one. Again, this means correct because 97 percent times your model gives you the correct answer. So you just need to change this index, or maybe I can create IDX. Something like this, IDX, uh, let's write 555. And uh, instead of this 143, I'll write IDX because it will take the variable 555 from here. And also it will take the IDX from here. So if you print this, if you if, if you display this image, this is the image of four. Let's understand what the model is predicting. So your model is predicting, your model is predicting four, correct? Right? So this is how you can predict uh, the images, the numbers, basically. So uh, I can do one more thing. In fact, if you uh, OK, so this will be your homework, right? You have to do this thing. Take any random image. So open paint paint. Uh, you remember in your uh, in, in in Windows laptop, you have paint. So have uh, open a paint, color it as complete black. And from the eraser, create a number like uh, seven. Create a number like this. Create a number like. Oops, just a second. Uh, create a number like seven and then save this image. Save this image and read this image. Read this image in Python. Read in Python, right? And ask your model to predict. Ask your model to predict. Model to predict. So try to do this and see if it can predict number seven or not. Because this would be nice, right? If it can actually do. So yeah, this is all. This is all about uh, how you can do the image classification, how you can predict some numbers. I hope you got a small idea. I, I I totally understand that the code look very alien or very foreign to you. Uh, you won't be able to understand what is what we are writing, why we are writing this thing, because it is all about library, right? If you keep following these library, maybe for a one week or two week, you will understand. You will very easily understand. But uh, now you. Uh, face a little difficulty in understanding the code. But if you understand the concept, that is the most important thing. Because code can change from language to language, from library to library. Even we are writing code in Python. But and in Python, we are using a library called Keras. You see, we are using a library called Keras. If I use a library called PyTorch, the code will completely change. The code will not look something like this. Even in the same language, code can be different because of the library. So if you change the language, like from if you go from Python to maybe Julia or uh, to uh, MATLAB or Octave, your code will look totally different. 
so that's why we have not focused a lot on code but understanding the concept i hope you got again the idea of what each line is doing not understanding what why we have written this code but understanding what each line is doing that's it right for example this line is uh, loading the mnist data and creating four variables like x train y train x test and y test then uh, what this function is doing this function is displaying the image you don't you don't need to care uh, why this function is written in such a way only right because la learning language or the learning whole framework whole library in just one hour is very very difficult that's why i haven't focused a lot on uh, the language right so similarly what this two category is used for it is used for converting it into converting it into uh, the one hot vector right if you have given just five it will be converted to 0000001234 and then all zeros right so that why do we want to convert in one hot vector so that we can understand the loss function we can compute the loss so important thing is you just understand what is happening why it is happening it's slightly difficult to understand the very first go right similarly this line this piece of code is very very important because here you are creating the whole model you are creating dense layer what are dense layer dense layer are like uh, these type of layers know, they are known as dense layer they are connected with each other they are fully connected each other right fully connected with each other you see they are they are dense layers number of units are different number of layers are different but they are dense layer right so number of units are different activation function is always always value in the hidden layer in the output we are using softmax that's it right uh, compiling is again important because you need to mention that which is the optimizer what is the loss function what is the matrix accuracy if you do not write accuracy here if you do not write accuracy here you will not see the accuracy over here as well right so that's why we are measuring the accuracy every time in each epoch and this fit is called uh, your training of the model right and that's it that's it so the last function very very important is the predict function right you need to predict the classes okay so uh, this is it this is it from my side uh, if you have any doubts just let me know we can take a 10 minute doubt session uh, and then that quiz and uh, things like that right so any doubt if uh, anyone has any doubt uh, just let me know otherwise uh, over to you organizers uh... yes so we are almost at the end of the session only uh, so if you have any doubts so maybe uh, you can ask uh, doubts right otherwise we'll do uh, the quiz which is the best framework and uh, we can use for uh, i think there is no best or worst framework uh, whatever you like you can use most famous frameworks are tensorflow keras and uh, pytorch these are the most famous uh, like 99% people use either uh, tensorflow keras or pytorch there are some other frameworks as well but uh, not all people use those frameworks so keras tensorflow and uh, pytorch keras is one of the easiest and again then uh, pytorch is easy and tensorflow would be slightly difficult but uh, tensorflow is uh, used a lot of time in production but you can start with the keras keras is like simple simple framework and it is powerful as well right okay so uh, any any other doubt uh, if you have Cool. So, uh, if there are no doubts, then maybe uh, we can take the quiz uh, and so on, right? Uh, okay, yeah. So this is it uh, from my side. Thank you very much. Uh, over to you, uh, organizers. Uh, thank you, Mohit sir. Uh, it was really a very interesting workshop. Uh, I didn't only really enjoy it, uh, but I tried uh, implementing it simultaneously. Uh, I enjoyed the part uh, how neural network will learn. Uh, it was really 
really very interesting to know uh, everyone don't forget to do that homework which sir said and even i will try that uh, okay so we have abhishek sonar with us uh, we'll start uh, with the quiz then okay so guys it is time for the quiz now and uh, we ha- will be having three winners uh, they'll win coupons from coding blocks are you guys excited for the quiz if yes uh, please type in the chat box yes i want to see how many people are excited for this quiz okay so uh, okay i'll give some instruction before starting to the quiz uh, okay so for this event we are using slider platform for the quiz uh, and there will be multiple choice question uh, be sure uh, that we are judging you on the basis of accuracy and uh, your speed also to enter your slider username uh, make sure that you use your gmail id so that if you win the coupon we get to know you as soon as possible now suppose if your mail id is uh, deeplearning@gmail.com then your slido username will be deeplearning so make sure and uh, one more important thing uh, make sure you have two screen so that a uh, question will be appearing on the screen and the answer will be uh, given through slide so make sure to have two screen so that you can uh, look at the qu- question as well and you can at the same time answer okay uh, so are you guys ready uh, did you log in i mean did you join here's the link uh, you can see slido.com and here's the code sesa just type sesa not hashtag sesa also there is one thing to add like the number of questions will be 10 and at the end of the 10 questions the three lucky winners would be provided free coupons from coding block yes definitely so uh, join fast uh, we'll be starting in a moment if everyone is ready also the google collab yeah, then- link which mohit sir was doing the projects will be shared with you as well yes one more thing uh, the video lecture if, if if you guys have missed this uh, session the starting part uh, the recording video lecture a recorded video lecture will be given uh, through your mail so don't forget to fill the feedback form also for the e certificate okay then let's get started I can see only two participants. Guys, join fast. Three, five. You can see there are total thirty four participants, and only thirteen have joined. This is not fair. Everyone has to participate if you want to win that coupon of coding blocks.
come on guys i hope everyone has uh, got the instructions clear four more to go for 20 also the ones who have entered their name as the username for the quiz have to contact us in case they are the winners okay uh, so the just uh, go into the browser uh, type slido.com uh, you will enter in that browser and just uh, they'll ask you the code just type the code sessa Shreyansh, I hope uh, you got how to join the quiz. no it is s l i d o dot com yes right the numbers are not increasing guys the 34 participant i can see but only 17 are interested in this quiz well we have come on guys um the 20 participant are waiting for other participant to join the quiz okay then uh, i guess there is no increase in the participant then let's start the quiz uh, if anyone here who is not getting the instruction how to join the quiz okay let's start i guess we are good start people. yeah yes, yes. Okay, so the very first question which we have is which of the following adds non-linearity to a neural network? So is the answer A gradient descent, B rectified linear unit that that is ReLU, option C convolution operation, or is it option D loss function? We already have five answers. Come on, guys. It is pretty easy. Like sir mentioned this in the starting itself. Yes. Yes. Really, very easiest question. I guess everyone will get this. Uh, get this answer right.
Okay, four more participants. I guess they are confused which to choose. Seventeen, three more to go. Okay. So the correct answer is. Okay. Seventy percent of guests correct. Yes, which is represented by ReLU of Z. Okay, so we have Divya at the leaderboard. Okay, so let's uh, begin the second question. Okay, so the second question is: If we increase the number of hidden hidden layers in an ANN, what effect does it have on the network? So the options are: decrease the complexity, increase the complexity. Can either increase or decrease the complexity. It doesn't have uh, any effect to the network. What do you guys think? Comment it. Oh. Also, guys, be a bit quick in answering because, like, we only have twenty-five to thirty seconds per question. Yes, uh, this was the reason. Uh, we didn't put timer because we want everyone to participate. So. What do you think, Abhishek? What might be the answer? Any guesses? No, no. We can't write, or else it would be cheating. Yeah, yeah. But I think uh, it can be no. Sir no. illustrated this with a beautiful example as well. Yes, yes. Considering various parameters. Yes, I hope everyone will guess this right. Guys, ten seconds more, everyone. Yes, five participants are remaining. I guess times up. We can see the answer. yes, all. So the right answer increase the complexity. So ninety four percent have guessed it right. What about six percent? Confused? Okay. Let's uh, let's see who is on the leaderboard. Okay, we have Prajwal Dubey. Okay, Divya, better luck next time. Okay, Divya is on the third. Second is Vineet. Okay. Let's see. Next question. So the next question is: What is the sequence of the following task in a perceptron? So we have to guess the exact sequence in which a perceptron is made. Yes, we have the options as option A. Initialize weights of perception randomly, or option B, go to the next batch of data set, or option C, if the prediction does not match the output, change the weight, or option D, for sample input, compute an output. Guys, ten minutes, ten seconds more. I guess times up, so we can just see the responses. Yes. Next question. 
Let's see the next question. Quite close. Okay, let's see what's the answer. Okay, Prajwal Dubey on the top. Same, okay. You can see same leaderboard. Okay, next question. So the next question is which of the following activation function we use the final layer of the neural network in case of multi-class classification? Is the answer sigmoid, okay, red, so or linear? I would like to emphasize that in this question it is multi-class. Yes, and this question was asked by the SERP before, <laughs> and we have answered it as well. So this is the hint. I guess you can guess it right. OK, then we'll jump on to the next. Uh, we'll see what's the result. OK, we have 61% vote for small uh, soft max and 33 for sigmoid let's see what's the right answer it is soft max okay i guess people are confused between uh, the two okay so we have here the need on the top yes next question okay so which of the following tasks can be done using the neural networks this is very easy question i guess everyone will guess it right image classification music generation malware detection or all of the above oh we have potent responses already 15. great 81 percent have uh, answered for all of the above. let's see the answer Yeah, that's right. Let's see who is on the leaderboard. Okay, we have Vineet again. Prajwal uh, and Divya. They are also uh, the top three. Let's see. Next question. So the next question is a bit tricky, we can say, which was asked by Sir itself in the Q&A section. The number of nodes in the input layer is 10 and the hidden layer is 5. The maximum number of connections from the input layer to the hidden layer are? Is it option A, 50, option B, 55, option C, more than 50, or option D, less than 50? OK, so there is an instruction ignoring base term. Keep that in mind and answer the question. Oh, we have 12 answers already. Let's see the answer. Oh, it is 50. I guess you got confused again this time. Let's see the leaderboard. Uh, I guess this is a repeated question. Uh, next question. Okay, this is the next question. I guess uh, which of the okay which of the following question does not add non-linearity neural networks? Sigmoid, tan, 
linear real loop. Okay, let's see the answers. Okay, let's keep it a suspense. Let's keep this a uh, little word and uh, move on to the questions. So the next question is which of the following library cannot be used to create deep learning model? Is it option A TensorFlow, option B PyTorch, option C Pandas, or is it option D Theano? Yeah, I know the answer. Do the you question is cannot. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, I got confused. Okay, I guess people will not, participant will not get confused. Okay. Okay, uh, one participant. Okay, next question. Let's see the answer first. Okay, Panda. Okay, we'll skip this leaderboard and we'll jump to the uh, next question. Okay. What does each node in hidden layer of neural network represent? A hidden feature, a random a random number, prediction of data, or none of the above? It's quite easy. Yes. The name itself suggests many things. <laughs> yes. Okay, one question <coughs> remaining. Okay, 67 have guessed it right. Okay, let's jump on to the next question and see who is on the leaderboard. After this, oh, we have uh, Divya and Vineet and Prajwal. There is a competition between three oh now. But no, but, uh, we have three winners for this. So one question to go. OK, so the last question is, uh, in neural network, what happens when input data is correctly classified? Small adjustment in weight is done, or large adjustment in weight is done, or no adjustment in weight is done, or weight adjustment doesn't depend on classification of input vector. Let's see how many will guess this last question right. Okay, let's see the answers. Okay, 55% have answered the last option. Let's see what is the answer. Oh, no adjustment in weight is done, is the right answer. Okay, now we are waiting for that moment that who are the three lucky winners who will win this coupon. Oh, that is Divya. Vineet and Prajwal. Congratulations. Uh, Congratulations. You have won, yes. You have won the three coupons. Uh, sorry. Uh, you have won the coupons. You three of you have won the coupons of from coding blocks. So uh, we'll mail you the coupons uh, in two to three days. And also don't forget uh, to fill the feedback link given for the each certificate. Uh, it is also given in uh, in the I guess it is uh, someone send it in the comment box please it will be easy to fill
okay uh, then please uh, fill the feedback form uh, your feedback will give us a better understanding on uh, what topics we could uh, like uh, you would like to know more about uh, so please give your word valuable feedback we would love to know how uh, how you felt about today's uh, workshop okay then i think it is time to end this session okay so uh, on the behalf of on the behalf of sasa vid chapter i extend a very hearty vote of thanks to mohit sir for gracing this uh, workshop and sparing your val valuable time with us thank you again everyone for attending and uh, we re we really appreciate it uh, that you took time on saturday afternoon joining us till the end of the workshop i would also like to thank our whole committee members for making this event possible thank you for all your efforts and also stay tuned with us for such events and don't forget to like the video and also subscribe it and turn on the bell icon so whenever you join uh, next events uh, you will be notified and uh, will get directly into your demons so and also do share it uh, with your friends and also don't forget to follow us on instagram where we'll be giving spoilers about our next event okay then um see you soon jai maharashtra and jai marathi thank you see you next time